Tucker, given what he has done the last couple of years, and certainly last season, a Gold Glove Award. It's a reloaded Houston Astro team with a first baseman that replaces Yuli Gurriel. He comes over from the team that's in town to open up their 2023 season. It's the Chicago White Sox. They did not make a whole bunch of changes, but they do have a new manager. As we get set for the opening pitch to be thrown out by Houston's own Megan the Stallion. The sellout crowd of about 41,000 have been on their feet for about the last 40 minutes with the teams announced their opening day lineups and their entire rosters and the World Series trophies. Stallion is being told the pitch clock, which is something that we're going to see this year, is now running. She was practicing beneath the stadium just a few minutes ago and was throwing strikes. So here we go if she gets set to throw. that we are underway and set for the first pitch as we get set for opening night baseball here in Houston a special thanks to Carl Weathers for voicing our open you can catch new episodes of his show the Mandalorian Wednesdays only on Disney Plus there are two words that belong to baseball no it ain't turn to walk off hot dogs or cracker jacks it's been said Cy Young spoke these words long before the babe called his shot. Two words belted through the eras and all the changes. And no, it's not pine tar, bigger bases, or pitch clock. This game is always moving, evolving. But the heart of the game stays the same because of two words. On opening day, those words tell Astros fans, we're going back to back. And tells everyone else, this is our year. Who knows what we'll get? Perfect game, triple crown, triple play, grand slam, hit streak, moonshot, broken bat, circus, catch, extra innings, curtain call. Well, nothing happens. Nothing until we hear these two words. Play ball. The two greatest words in baseball right there is we welcome you to opening night baseball on ESPN presented by Front Door, an all new home repair and maintenance app. Man, oh man, are they ready for baseball here in Houston as they are around the rest of this country. It's opening day, a whole different feel with new rules and new optimism about the direction the game is going in. There is no work stoppage. We are starting on time, playing a full 162 game schedule and looking forward to see it all play out because baseball, perhaps more than any other sport, is as unpredictable as you can imagine. This is a treat. We have the Rocket, Roger Clemens, a Houston native, of course, who pitched here. Seven times Cy Young Award winner in the booth with David Cohn, taking care of his yes obligations with the Yankees. That's Eduardo Perez. Go, baby. Hi, uh, boys. You pitched in 13. I don't know if you knew that, but 13 opening day or night games. What's that like? What's the difference opening day, night versus every other game? It's exciting. Uh, it's an honor to have that uh, opportunity. I didn't know I pitched in 13. I'm pretty sure at least two of those were in snow flurries, I'm sure, up in the east. But uh, what an honor. And uh, you always look to get your team off to a great start. Right. Tossing and turning. A lot of <laughs> sleepless nights before the opening day. And the jitters, they're real. They're out there right now. Yeah, and look, if you're an offense, you're facing guys like this, and we have two aces on the mound. Framber Valdez goes for the Astros. Let's talk about Houston. They got a new first baseman. They didn't do a whole lot else, and as Jeff Passan just said on baseball tonight, the depth is unbelievable on this team. The depth is there, and uh, the only downer really is, you know, with Altuve down for a couple yeah. months, but it's going to be exciting time for these guys. Uh, I think, again, they can repeat. They can do what they need to do because of the depth on their pitching staff so I'm looking forward to it Valdez tonight you're going to see 17 wins 
Last year, uh, World Series Game 6 winner, uh, he features a sinker that he threw over 3,000 times. You, you know, you're going you're gonna to see a bunch of that tonight. A lot of ground balls with a defensive shift. Will some of those find their way into the outfield? On the other side, Eduardo's college roommate is now the manager of the Chicago White Sox. Pedro Grafal, beyond doing that, has done everything in baseball and now gets a great chance. He really has. He's checked every box. Yeah. And not only is he bilingual, but he's a multicultural as well. He understands each player. And he's earned that respect throughout spring training, even before spring training. And now for opening day, every one of these players that underachieved last year, if it might have been via injury or just not putting up the numbers, wants to put up the numbers for Pedro Grifo and his new staff. So it's opening night. We've seen some games be played in less than two hours and 35 minutes, complete games. We've seen others that push the three hour mark. Two great pitchers, an outstanding atmosphere, and the defending World Series champs against the Chicago White Sox. First pitch is coming up as Houston is on the clock. They are ready to defend a World Series title. Well, a long time ago, people used sundials to tell time, and then came the hourglass, and eventually we went to the mechanical clock, and pocket watches, and wrist watches, and the most annoying of all, that dang alarm clock. In 2023, baseball has woken up to the concept that it's time to keep it moving. Baseball is now on the clock. Pitchers, catchers, hitters all have to be in place and ready to go or face penalties. This is an historic shift in the on-field rules, which includes outlawing the shift. Baseball takes a stand and tells people where they have to stand. When they do get on base, 
The bag's a lot bigger. You've increased the size by about three square inches. It looks like small pizza boxes out there, and it is potentially delicious. All of these changes are designed to create a lot more excitement and emphasize the athleticism of the great baseball players. Will it work? Well, only time will tell. This is a new era for the sport of Major League Baseball that has never before operated with a clock of any kind. It feels like, in talking with the umpires before the game, grateful that they started in the spring and that for the most part, everybody is now well versed in how these all operate. We take a look at our starting lineups. They are brought to you by Front Door and all new home repair and maintenance app. As Eduardo alluded to, the Chicago White Sox last year on a turn La Russa went 81 and 81. There were a whole bunch of injuries they dealt with, and frankly, the play was poor. Anderson, Robert, Vaughn, Jimenez is the DH. Moncada, after a bump in the WBC, is starting, and he'll be at third base. Ben Attendee, Grandal, Elvis Andrews, and Roby Gonzalez. Framber Valdez gets a start. Rocket, what are we going to see? Again, you're going to see the sinkers. I may have most misspoke a little bit in the opener. 3,000 pitches last year. Over half of those were sinkers, so I expect to see a lot of them. All right, when he gets set for his first pitch, we have a, another special guest down on the field, and here's our public address announcer. To the field, but we're happy to welcome in Academy Award-nominated actor and producer. Just a couple of caps this multi-talented young man wears. Please welcome Mark Wahlberg with tonight's Bank of America First Call. Hey, Houston! Please join me! And, and wishing wish my, my favorite Yankee, Yankee killer, killer a happy birthday to Alex Bregman, first off. Hey, Houston, let's play baseball! <laughs> All right. Leading off for the Chicago Mark White Wahlberg, Sox. noted Red Sox fan on Alex Bregman's birthday, and we are looking forward to talking with Alex Bregman. He'll be wearing the microphone for us in the third inning. So Valdez will be on the mound. Tim Anderson steps in. He's the shortstop. And he is healthy and ready to have some fun this season. That's the watchword, it feels like, Eduardo, for this Chicago team. Have fun this year. Be loose. Be loose, be relaxed, be consistent. Something that they weren't last year. Never knew what you were going to get. The energy has to be top grade. That's one thing that the coaching staff for the Chicago White Sox is looking at on a daily basis. Martin Maldonado is behind the plate. Bregman is at third. Jeremy Pena is at short with no Altuve. Motillo Dubon, a defensive specialist at second base for all the ground balls. Jose Abreu is at first base. And in the outfield, Jordan Alvarez in left. Jake Myers in center. Kyle Tucker, the gold glover, is in right field. And we are set for baseball here in Houston. First pitch of the 2023 season. Bill Miller calls balls and strikes, and the first pitch is a ball. And the clock has begun on Frambois Valdez. And there is Dubon. He gets the first chance. And Anderson with a ground out, the throw across the diamond. In between batters, 30 seconds for the pitchers. And then when the batter is at the plate with... A runner on, you have 20 seconds to start your delivery. With the bases empty, you have 15 seconds to start your delivery. Not a shock. We start out with a ground ball there. Love it. Sinker down and in. Punched it to second. We got the call. And again, I, I today, guys, I got to tell you, going around the stadium, talking to the managers with you all, I learned so much. Uh, it was fun for me to watch and hear the questions that you guys asked. I heard from both managers confidence and pay attention to details. And uh, when, when they both were answering y'all's questions, that was just a, a lot of fun for me. Robert looks at that one. Did he go? No, says the first base. I'm part of that's Rob Drake. And I love how the pitcher and Rocket came out right away. Ground ball, yep. love it, right? Because that's a sinker ball, and that's exactly what you want. If you're a White Sox fan, you're not loving that ground ball because that's exactly what Fran Valdez is trying to do early in counts. 289, 334, 474 slash line for Robert. So you pitched in 13 opening days. At what point did you feel comfortable on the mound in your opening days? After probably about my second pitch thrown. Second pitch. Yeah, I got real comfortable after that. <clears throat> Again, I don't see uh, what they call it, the pitch com. I don't see a wristband on Valdez right now. So 
Now, assuming Maldonado's calling it as Robert swings and misses at that on a fastball that was elevated, a 90 mile an hour actually change up, and the count goes two and two. And this year, the pitcher is allowed to have the pitch call, meaning the evolution is such that pitchers can call their own games. I saw quite a bit of that in spring training. Robert on the ground that's foul. How did you handle that. Did you call your own games well before pitch come? I did. I did actually I did it with uh, my looks towards home plate when we talk, just talked about paying attention to detail with my catchers when a foul ball was going umpires throwing the ball back to me. They had to really keep an eye on me because I was calling it with my face my eyes my looks on which side of the plate I was going to go to. 2 2 that one runs high. Wait so you called pitches with your face about 90 95 percent of the game from the mound and. Uh, uh, and, and, it, and it made the even when I went to a new team or had a new catcher uh, it made the flow of the game uh, very easy. Valdez three two to Robert. Man that's a that's a bowling ball it's in play. Yeah and Valdez fires and safe says Rob Drake. That's a heck of a job right there by Robert first of all to be able to. To fight off pitches. But most importantly, watch the ump cam right here. Did it hit Robert? No, it did not. He takes off immediately. Good job by Robert. And his athleticism, this is what makes him elite. Not only is he powerful, not only can he play great defense, but he can also run really well. And right there, we saw a heck of a skill by Robert. That ball looked like it almost hit behind the plate. Yeah, for a second, everybody hesitated as Andrew Vaughn looks at that first pitch in there for a strike. Curveball at 78. Vaughn, the th first baseman now with the, the Jimenez with the Astros. 17 homers, 76 runs batted in last year. Sky high towards the roof here at Minute Maid. And man, that nearly, nearly hit the roof. Pena is out there to make a difficult play. You won't see many of those. No, and and you got to note uh, the viewers, what we call kitty litter. It's it's totally different in spring training, right? The the dirt in front of home plate in spring training is extremely hard. You get Texas leaguers, what they call Texas leaguers, and base hits through the infield where the ball gets topspin. With a sinker ball pitcher like Valdez, you know that kitty litter in front, you might water it down a little bit more. The ball's not going to come out of it. There it is. To Hopper Pena backs up, flips to second, and he retires. Luis Robert, Eloy Jimenez into a 6 4 inning ending out. Welcome back with the Astros to the plate. Back here in Houston 12 pitches and eight of them for strikes couple of ground outs pretty typical for Framber Valdez. By the way Luis Robert flew down the line at 30 feet per second which is elite speed. We take a look at our starting lineup the Houston Astros brought to you by front door and all new home repair and maintenance app. Well at the top it's going to be a little different without Jose Altuve. 
who again, first time since 11, he's not in the lineup with that fractured thumb. So it's Pena Bregman celebrating a birthday. Jordan Alvarez did not play a lot during the spring. Jose Abreu is the newest guy here. Tucker, and looking forward to seeing Yonder Diaz hit. He's the DH, and he really impressed in spring training. He will bat six in front of Jake Myers, Martin Maldonado, and Mauricio Dubon. Terrific ranks, Rocket. A guy that likes to get ahead with the breaking pitch. He had 78 walks, which led Major League Baseball, and yet his ERA was just 220. And here's Pena. And the first pitch from Cease misses down. What do you like about well, Cease? Well, you know, don't discredit. You know, second in the side, Young. He knows what he's doing out there. Um, interesting to watch. Uh, he, he will land on his heel and spin out quite a bit. That little finish, that little leg kick finish where you kind of peel off towards first base, you'll see that uh, in a handful of guys around the league now. Um, instead of really reaching out front, trying to deliver the ball to home plate, but they get they get great uh, they get great movement. He'll land on his heel and spin out a little bit on the ground right up the middle. What a start for the World Series MVP and LCS MVP Jeremy Pena, 22 homers last season and a leadoff single. Jeremy Pena not wasting any time at all, hitting it right back up the middle. And now the Astros have their fastest runner on base. Slider stays up and he hits it right where it came from. 104 miles an hour off the bat. Here's Bregman, the second baseman. Pena doesn't go, and Bregman fouls it right back up this way. But the other rule we didn't talk about, guys, and Roger, you may want to comment on it, but disengagements, meaning the number of times the pitcher can throw over to first base with a fast runner like Pena, you can do it twice. If you do it a third time and you don't get him, it's a balk and the runners advance a base. That's exactly right. Bregman out in front of that. He pulls it to the seats and foul. Ravi, I was a guy that, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to throw over three times. The first time was kind of uh, uh, just show me. The second one was a good move, and then the third one was like on target, spot on, on the corner of the base to try and pick the guy off. And uh, again, from our earlier talks, we've heard guys that they, they would rather chance doing that. Make a, a, a third throw over there, yeah. especially with a base dealer. Good block there by Yasmani Grandal, who was one of many White Sox players that were hurt last year, Eduardo. Griffol brings a great catching experience to it, and he was noted for really improving Salvador Perez's overall game when he was the bench coach in Kansas City. Whew. Yeah. 97 and up, and Bregman is gone. You know what's going to be fun here tonight, Carl? Every time a swing and miss, especially elevated, we might hear that right there. Yeah. And that was a strike three, and you had many of these up in the zone, right? Yeah, these guys, uh, you know, these guys have great breaking balls, uh, whether it be their, their slider, their curve, a good change. You still got to pitch off your fastball at this level, especially early in the game. Jordan Alvarez. That is that filthy pitch that C says when he's right, he's getting ahead with. He is. And then in, on the other end, the Astros, they're, they're aware that he likes to throw that slider. Yep. And in their conversations over hearing during batting practice, they're like, guys, do not forget about that number three because it's good and it's hard. Here it comes again to Alvarez, and that one is back against the screen. Let's just set the White Sox defense. Mentioned Grandal, the catcher. Yoan Moncada's at third. Tim Anderson is at shortstop. Played second base during the WBC. Elvis Andrews is the second baseman. Andrew Vaughn is at first. Andrew Benatendi, five years, 75 million in left. Robert in center. Romy Gonzalez in right field tonight. Grandal had leg issues. His back was killing him at the end of the year last year. Talked about, I maybe considered surgery, but I wanted to be there for my team. Remember, they weren't that far out of it. When you think about even an 81 and 81 record the last couple of weeks of the season, they had a chance. And then they had a disastrous series against the Indians, and that kind of ended it. Pena goes. That one's high, and there's no throw as Grandal had it come out of his glove. He had to come out of his glove, but his footwork wasn't there at all. It didn't seem like he was going to come out of the crouch to be able to throw that ball. A really good jump by Jeremy Pena. Watch the footwork here. Jeremy gets a good jump. He was going to throw it off his left knee. I don't think he had a chance, even if he would have caught it cleanly. So now an RBI opportunity for Alvarez. Swing and a miss. Dylan Cease picks up strikeout number two. 
And again, that's a pitch, that slider down and in on the back foot. It's something that uh, somebody like myself in the mid 80s, uh, all the way to uh, the mid 90s, we had to stay away from that. That was a nitro zone for lefties. But now, because in the last 10 years, they look out over all the time, they want to launch that ball. And it opens it up big time. And here is Jose Abreu. Last year, the White Sox leader in just about every offensive category. Gets three years to play for the Houston Astros. He hit 243 home runs for Chicago. As Dusty Baker said he is an RBI machine. Sees his knuckle curve misses. All time rank Chicago White Sox Jose Abreu is top three in homers. He's fifth in RBI and he is sixth in doubles during the regular season. That one's a little better and another knuckle curve in there for a strike. So he's calling his game. He's yep. he's, he's calling. Uh, he has pitch calm on his glove also and then they're confirming it. So he's got it in motion before he even gets on the rubber. And he is working fast. Starts his delivery. There are six seconds on the pitch clock and another great pitch and Abreu is gone. That is what had Dylan Cease finish second in the Cy Young race last year. Strikeouts the birthday boy Bregman. Strikes out Alvarez and he gets Abreu. Stranding Pena at second. All right, Rocket, take a trip down memory lane as ESPN's telecast of opening night baseball is presented by Front Door, an all-new home repair and maintenance app coming soon. Last back-to-back -back World Series champions, the Yankees in 98, 99, and 2000 under that guy right there, Joe Torre. I love I loved playing for Mr. Steinbrenner. obviously love playing for Joe Torre. Wonderful bench coach Don Zimmer and Mel Stoudemire, my pitching coach. It was a, it was a treat for me. And uh, that's the only thing you think about with the Yankees getting there and winning that world championship. They're off to a good start. The Yankees won five nothing today. Aaron Judge homered. Garrett Cole was solid. Yoan Moncada now first up in the second inning and he swings at the first one from Fran Valdez and fouls it off. How did you get to New York. What, what led you to getting to the Yankees. Uh, Mr. Steinbrenner actually came here to Houston and uh, he said pretty point blank you want to be a Yankee or don't you. I've been trying to get you for two years and. Uh, Get you into pinstripes and it, it all worked out. The, the 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 best was we were on the second level of my home and he decided you know uh, typical George Steinbrenner had the collar white collar yep. neck and uh, the jacket took the jacket off saw one of my leg machines and I said there's no way he's going to go over and try and lift these and he did. Yep, he had a nice <laughs> little workout in the turtleneck. Good pitch, hey. Valdez. He picks up his first strike out of the night. A sinker at 96 on the corner. And you can tell the ball's sinking because again they're pounding straight into that dirt that kitty litter I was talking about earlier. 
Watch Maldonado right there with the frame. That's why he's one of the best in the game. Moves his body over and gives Bill Miller a good angle to be able to see and place that call. That's why guys love throwing to him, E. Starts Andrew Benatendi off with a strike. Benatendi was a Yankee at the end of last year. Had a much better offensive season with Kansas City. Then went to New York, and he got five years and $75 million to come to Chicago. Isn't it a little different, guys, to see the infield with a lefty up, not shift? You know, you're so used to the three guys on the right side. Sure are. Schwarber is going to enjoy it this season for the Phillies. Close pitch. Bill Miller says no. It's a ball. At, at Benintendi at the plate, he can morph into a slap hitter if he wants to, or he can hit for power if he wants to. Last year with Kansas City, leading off, he needed to get on base, so it was less home runs, more contact. Three balls and a strike to Benintendi, who is a Cincinnati native and now comes back to the Midwest to play for Chicago. Time for planning ahead. It's brought to you by Voya Financial. Ben Attendee was the big move here, along with Pedro Grafold, the new manager, the new manager. Clevenger, and you see the guys that left on the right side of the screen as Ben Attendee sends that to the seats. It's interesting because a lot of folks, Eddie, I think, that are fans of the White Sox are a little frustrated by the lack of movement. But the truth was, a couple years ago, they were a 90-win team. Then they had a disaster last year, and there were a lot of guys hurt. I think they added a lot more than what people think just because of the injured players. They're back, they're healthy. 3 2, and Ben Attendee right into the glove of the first baseman, Jose Abreu, and there are two down. And when you're able to get that addition, you're, you're better defensively as well. With Vaughn now at first base, Ben Attendee in left. You have Luis Robert healthy in center field. The outfield is going to be interesting because it's going to be Oscar Colas who's going to be playing the majority of the time in right field. It's because of the man on the hill right now that Colas is not playing. Bill Miller's got the camera on his helmet, so we will take a look at this bat through his camera. And it's Yasmani Grandal, and that one misses. One ball, no strikes. Year four with the White Sox for Grandal, who was a Padre, then a Dodger, and a year with the Brewers. Again, the view of Miller behind the plate, beaten onto the ground. Bregman takes the hop and the throw over. And another ground ball for Framber Valdez. Game is moving quickly. Middle of the second, 0-0.
Welcome back, everyone. Opening night baseball on ESPN is presented by Front Door, an all-new home repair and maintenance app. With Roger Clemens, Eduardo Perez, waiting to hear from Buster Only. We are underway opening night, Major League Baseball, and across the country. And Sunday night, David Cohn rejoins us as we will be in Dallas, Texas Rangers, Philadelphia Phillies. Here's Kyle Tucker. Whew. Big swing and a miss. A cease fired 98. Not to tradition. That's more rocket like. That's not traditional for Dylan Cease to get ahead that way. I, I, I knew guys were going to dial it up a little bit from spring training while they're trying stuff, but this is, they got it going on early. This is coming right at you. Dylan Cease did not throw a fastball at all to Jose Abreu. Did not throw, only threw one fastball to Jordan Alvarez in his at bat that he struck him out with, and one to Alex Bregman. 42% of the time, he usually, he'll throw a slider at you, but his velocity is up high tonight. Second in the Cy Young voting last year. And the next one from Cease went off speed in the dirt. He's thrown a lot of knuckle curves early in this game. Drafted out of high school in Georgia by the Chicago Cubs. Ooh. Strike three, yes, ooh is right. That's four strikeouts in a row for Dylan Cease, and the slider is filthy. I mean, I know you need to be sharp, right, at this time of year, but, you know, coming out of spring training, like, ideal ideal right now because six innings, 100 pitches, but super efficient right now. And, Ravi, like you said, he's getting the ball and going, calling his own pitch right from the mound. Ready to go again. Yiner Diaz is up, and that one breaks in there for a strike. I mean, even the backup breaking ball there is catching the top part of the zone for a strike. Diaz, Dusty, raved about his hitting ability. He's one of the backup catchers they have in this organization. He and Corey Lee were in a spring training competition. And ultimately, it was a little bit more of the versatility. And with Brantley and Altuve being down the offense that Diaz provides. 0 oh, 2. And, and the offense that they're going to miss from Brantley until he comes back is huge. Yeah. He balances out the team with a lot of contact, a lot of quality at bats, gives it, and against elite pitching, he can really just focus on and hit them really well from line to line. So again, you see that pitch clock ringing down to about four, and he starts his delivery, and that's when that pitch clock will mm. go off, and he jammed him, and he sends one into the seats for a souvenir. Made him aware of that inside fastball now. How do you think you would have handled the pitch clock? I, I think I'd have handled it fine. Like I said, there'd be certain times when guys are on base that I might try a couple things. I think you saw that in spring training. Uh, Scherzer tried to exploit it a little bit. Yeah. Um, we talked about the hitter getting their one timeout, and then uh, I didn't realize that when they did take their timeout, they could look at the umpire and tell him to go ahead and start the clock before I get back in the box. I'll be honest, I spoke with the umpires before, and not all of them knew that the hitters could do the same. This one in the air, and the center fielder, Luis Robert, is right there to make the out. It's pretty cool. Rocket, your split finger was probably on many lists, but in this case, it's Dylan Cease's slider. Most valuable pitches, according to Scott Datcast in 2022, it's powered by Google Cloud. Otani's sweeper, Alcantara, who was on a bang up outing today for the Marlins, Verlander and Diaz. Ironically, both of those guys find themselves one out for the season, and Diaz and Verlander on the IL now. I think it has a lot to do with the spin, obviously, with this the spin rate on it and the way he lands and peels off towards first base. Good pitch there. Jake Myers, the center fielder, couldn't pull the trigger on it. Rocket, the ability to throw the off-speed pitch for strikes early in a game, how much confidence does that give you? Yeah, it's big. It's big. Uh, either one, when you got command, like Cease has right now. And oh, there it is again. Feeling yeah. good. Strikes out three last inning, two more in this inning, and he's making a living. Getting ahead of guys, Rocket. Six straight first pitch strikes. Spot Will, on. Spot on is right. Back to minute made through two, zero, zero.
Stand by. <laughs> Welcome back. Wildly popular last year, and we're delighted that Alex Bregman has agreed to join us via the microphone and the earpiece. You can ask Alex a question. Use hashtag AskSNB on Twitter. All right, what's your uh, impression of the, of the start of this game as the defending champion, Alex? Well, it's an unbelievable crowd here today. We love playing in front of these great fans, and uh, just some great energy in the ballpark. Framber looks, uh, Framber looks good. Cease looks good. I buried the lead. I should have said happy birthday. I apologize for that. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. 29. 29 young years. Elvis Andrews leads off, and Valdez throws the first pitch in there, and that's ball one. Alex, with this man on the mound, how active do you have to be pre-pitch? Oh, when, when Framber's on the mound, you got to bring your glove to the ballpark. He uh, he just he gets ground balls. Uh, he's got great stuff. Attacks the zone. Uh, Maldonado does a great job uh, back there with him. In the dirt, you talk about Maldonado. You know, you bring back most of the same team that won the World Series. There appeared to be kind of a lightness about this group now that you were the champions again last year. Tell us about what it what it feels like to be back here as the defending champ with this group. Oh, it feels great. All these guys are super motivated. Uh, they love the game of baseball. Uh, they came into spring training prepared, and uh, it's been it's been a blast to be able to play with such great teammates. Um, I've been loving. Three two. On the ground of the shortstop, oh, Pena. Oh, boy. And there's an out. All right, Alex, everybody that you talk to around baseball, they all do different things in the offseason to get better. What did you do this offseason to get better? Uh, I was working on some some of the similar stuff I was working on towards the, uh, the August month, uh, August last year, um, trying to land closed um, and not, not open up into a spin, trying to uh, focus on hitting. Romy Gonzalez first pitch strike. Go ahead. Focus on hitting through the baseball. Um, worked on a little bit of a scissor action you see with like Trout and Altuve and some of those guys. With my swing. So I was working on that and then obviously um, trying to make sure the body was ready to go for the for, for another long season. The next one from Framber. Boy, you can feel the difference in pace, can't you? I know you went through spring. Oh. Does it feel like it's moving a mile a minute here? Oh my gosh, it is. It's, it moves even faster being mic'd up too because it's like answer a question and then it's back right back to it. <laughs> now we got a question from one of the fans out here as we look forward to the one two pitch from Framber Valdez. That misses high. Fan wants to know, Alex, who's your favorite baseball player of all time? Uh, growing up, um, I love Derek Jeter. I was a big Derek Jeter fan. Uh, my first game actually in Yankee Stadium. My mom was wearing my jersey, but she actually had on Jeter's jersey underneath mine. <laughs> um, and then, and then as a kid, Ray will field. He'll race to first. It'll be Bobby Gonzalez. That's how to endear yourself. Go ahead. Sorry, Alex. And then, uh, and then when I was getting a little bit older, I bat boyed for the New Mexico Lobos growing up. Yep. And Arizona State came into town. And they were winning 15 to 1. And uh, a guy hit a ground ball to shortstop. He was already 4 for 4 that day. Hit a ground ball to shortstop. Busted his tail down the line. Dove head first this into first like base. This feels like a Dustin Pedroia story. And I fell in love with Dustin Pedroia right there. <laughs> Two quick outs from Valdez back to the top of the order. And Tim Anderson. Oh boy, Framber. I don't think people all recognize the story about how your family has been involved with baseball forever. It's a long story, but tell us the highlights of that. Yeah, my grandfather was the general counsel for the Washington Senators, and uh, my dad basically grew up on Ted Williams' lap uh, in the clubhouse about, there. So, yeah, how about uh, that? <laughs> so we've loved baseball for a long, long time, and uh, it's 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 an honor to be able to play uh, here in the big leagues. I just love it that somebody's making a comment on how old Derek Jeter is. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was a that was a pitch clock thing right there. You saw that? Yeah, he pointed at him. Yep, Anderson was not locked in there. I don't know what I'm not sure what that was there. It starts the clock 15 seconds and Frapper Valdez will start his delivery before that hit zero. You don't need to throw it to start the delivery and the 2-1 pitch. 
now three and one. Next question from a fan. What do you think makes the Astros special as a team? Uh, I think just the, the work ethic, to be honest with you guys. Um, everyone works extremely hard, loves the game. Um, every single day, we're focused. Um, Down the line, and that one is in there. Fair ball. Anderson to second to throw from Tucker and a double for Tim Anderson. And this is one of the reasons why Tim Anderson has had a lot of success against Framber Valdez. Uh, throughout his career in the first inning he hit a ground ball to second he is not trying to hit it to you Alex he's trying to go the other way here he does it is able to keep it in the air and keep it fair ends up at second base on that 3 1 count you know a lot of my a lot of my friends that were around uh, him on Team USA uh, were so impressed uh, he's a he's a great player in this game and uh, he's fun to watch just not against us when he does that <laughs> that ball landed right on the foul line and it's a fair ball and now chance for Luis Robert in there strike one did you uh, did you spend a lot of time watching the WBC I did you know it was fun we had a lot of guys on our team go and compete yeah. uh, what a great great atmosphere was fortunate enough to play on it yep um, back a few years back filthy pitch there yeah. change up I mean, what a moment that was with Trout and Otani, too. Right? It's awesome for the game of baseball. Um, I, I, I just, I love where the game's at right now. 0 oh 2. Fouled up. So, how do you watch that last at bat? Are you sitting? Do you have to stand up? Are you pacing with Otani and Trout? Uh, I was watching it actually with my son. Uh, we were in spring training. I was holding him in my lap, and I was like, see those two guys? <laughs> Hopefully one day you can be like them, buddy. So you're talking to an eight-year, eight-month-old Knox at that point. Yep, it's beautiful. And he's in the ballpark tonight. 0-2. That's inside. One and two. He is. He's up there with uh, his mom, grandma, my mom, both grandmas actually. So he's uh, he's having a great time. That's great. Is your mom wearing the Jeter uh, shirt underneath? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Knowing her, she might be. One and two to Robert Anderson on second after a double. She's from Long Island, New York, so we were watching every every Yankee game growing up. Yeah. He was a unbelievable captain. Yes, he was. Say that again. Any memories of watching Roger Clemens? Oh, many, many. When he was with Houston, when he was with Boston, New York. Um, I mean, and then getting to see him here, talk the game with him here, it's, uh, you know, it's an honor. You know that, baby. I enjoy watching you at the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Thank you guys. Take care. Good to have you. Alex Bregman. Not an easy play as he gets the fleet footed Robert to end the inning.
Again, thank you to Alex Bregman and all the players willing to join us during our Sunday night telecast. Terrific, perfect ending. Tough play, took it off his chest. I don't know if he looked back to see if he had created a divot with his spikes, but Bregman gets the job done, and he is scheduled up fourth this inning. You guys made a comment during the break, which I think a lot of people at home would be curious to hear, because you said when Robert is up, both of you said, there's a good chance this is going to be pulled foul because of his, what, his swing path? What did you see? Well, with the swing path, it just seems like, and especially if you're at third base like Alex Bregman is, that every ball is going to be hit your way. Just the way he's cutting off that swing. And with Valdez being able to throw that curve ball in the two-seamer, it looks like it's the only place he can really hit it. It's down hard on that kitty litter, as you call it. Yeah, you, you recognize it as a pitcher, too. And like you said, if you're left-handed, you should be getting some action over there, short and third. Cease on the corner. What a start for Dylan Cease. Strikeout number six. 98, and he's on the edge with everything. Other than a couple backup sliders, he's been on the edge, and, and he's really dialed in his slider, too. Calling his own game, it seems like he's pitching with a lot of conviction on these went all sliders, the curveball, and then 98 on the black. Just take a seat, man. That's hats off. We, and when you do that, you're right. You can load the ball perfectly on your grip, whatever whatever the pitch is. I I, I really enjoy doing that because you're never messing around. Filthy there to Mauricio Dubon, the second baseman. So the first three strikeouts for Dylan Cease were all swinging. The last three have been looking. And it did strike you when you watch baseball, and you can speak to this better than anybody, when a pitcher is hot, he wants to keep going. He wants this pace. Absolutely. If you're a Chicago White Sox fan, you're going to relate to this. This seems like Mark, Mark Burley sure. on the mound. Yep. Never shook off seven times in his entire <laughs> career, so he said. And it was A.J. Przinsky most of the time putting the fingers down, and it was Mark Burley just throwing the ball. Here we go. Eight, nine seconds it would take between pitches. That's how good he was on that mound. Again, he's pitching like they they, they need to uh, catch a commercial flight here in a couple hours. <laughs> they have a charter, so <laughs> you, you can slow down if you want. And they're not going anywhere. <laughs> NCAA men's final four in town in Houston, a busy sports weekend, and this one is beaten into the ground and a nice charity hop for Elvis Andrews. And Dubon is retired. Two down in the inning. Hey, our first Sunday night baseball matchup of this season, the Phillies and Rangers finish up their three-game set in Arlington, Texas. We will have the call right here on ESPN. On ESPN2, Michael Kay and A-Rod back with their K-Rod presentation. Also available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Our coverage will start with baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown at 6 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. First pitch, another gross one to Pena as that's fouled off. It's, they just don't look like they're even, you know, they're, they're picking up spin at all right now. <laughs> look at, look, look at that. Remember, this is the same guy that hit that slider right back up the middle. So what does Dylan do this time? goes with the two curveballs. Now he's gone curveball, curveball, fastball elevated before. Watch this angle. Anderson is shaded more up the middle. Let me see, he can't have his feet on the other side of second base, the second base side, but he's shaded up the middle and that one from Cease misses. Remember last year in a 14 and 8 season, he had a streak of 13 consecutive starts with one earned run or less. 13 straight starts, a Major League Baseball record. Ended up with 227 strikeouts. This is up there. Well, guys, I pitched with a guy like this at, and when I came home here to Houston to pitch, and it was Roy Oswald. I mean, he, he, was, he would love this pitch. He's smiling right now in Mississippi somewhere. Pena gone. Dylan Cease, seven strikeouts through three innings. The leadoff single for Pena was the only damage. There you go. This is what's happened. It's the common denominator so far for Dylan Seeds. The strikeout.
Back here at Minute Maid Park with Dusty Baker. Pre-game ceremony, it looked like you were getting emotional. What was going through your mind? Well, just uh, the fact that it's opening day, we're back. The Clydesdales, all the family's here. I mean, a packed house. Yeah, it was an emotional time, but now it's time to get back to normal baseball. Okay, you got more than 50 years in this game. What do you think of this new pace with the pitch clock? Well, hey, man, it makes it, it keeps everybody on their toes. And a couple times, like like last inning, Framber is down to one second. And uh, I mean, sometimes it's good, but we're still getting used to it. Dusty, thanks. Back to you. Now, Buster, thank you very much. Framber Valdez ahead of Fawn. And that will be strike three. Maldonado will try to tag him and instead have to go to first. So Vaughn is out on strike. Second strikeout for Valdez. And guys, just what we anticipated, we have a pitcher's duel between Dylan Cease and Framber Valdez. You can suit up this season, MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Former Golden Spikes winner, uh, Cal, retired, and here's Eloy Jimenez. And there for a strike, Valdez and Cease both getting ahead. See that ball disappear underneath the bat of Jimenez, who's designated hitting tonight. Only played 55 games in 21, and he played only 84 last year. But second half of last year was a different story. He was outstanding. Valdez, quick work of Jimenez. I mean, come on, guys. 96 mile an hour sinker. <laughs> from the left I mean, side. From the left side. Uh, and, and all these... I mean, they're staying on the edge of the zone on all of them. On the bottom part, on the left and right, where the umpires kind of pinch you a little bit, and, and then they go up in the zone. Right in with another one at 90. So much for your starts in spring training, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and the beauty of this is, as a hitter, you're taught, okay, make, have him elevated. Stay off the low one, but he's hitting his spots down low effectively. I'm sure the report too for Chicago was they're they're looking there they're looking down but it's I mean it's so heavy again we talked about him hitting it out front in the dirt. You're going to have to change your approach just a little bit here your second or time through third time through the lineup. But I think it's really difficult especially for a, a swing path like Robert or even Moncada that hit, it's not a right field swing it's more of a pull type swing. A little low there. We'll, we'll he... put it this way I'm not I'm not changing. If I'm about does and, and I didn't either until you forced me to change. Yeah, he and again, my guys behind the plate, they're paying attention to detail too. They know what's going on. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep letting it eat until they change. There it is. I mean that's that's a bowling ball right there. Keep an eye on Maldonado's mitt, how low it is to the target. It's down low. He doesn't want him to throw anything up. And if you have that swing path like Moncada right now, the only thing you can do is pound it on the ground. Or swing over. 2 2. Off speed, and that is in the hole. He went with a curveball and kind of hung it a little bit at 79, and there is. It wasn't kind of, he hung it. Yeah. Was, he did him a favor. Watch where the location is, top part of the zone. That's going to get hit. Still pounded it on the ground, but it gave Moncada an opportunity to find barrel. And hit it through the infield. So Moncada on first, and this one is also into the hole. Pena was shaded towards second, and just like that, back to back singles. Moncada, Benatendi the other way. Good piece of hitting right there. And you got left handers taking you that way, even if you're a right handed pitcher or a left handed pitcher. So Let's you said that done. you said that Valdez did him Moncada a favor. What does that mean? He, he threw him a pitch that he could hit instead Absolutely. of when he could. Absolutely. Up in the zones, sped up his bat, of course. I mean, he has been he has been 96, 98 down in the zone. Now Grandal. And the first pitch sails a little high at 95. That should have been a show me pitch right there. Because he's looking for that ground ball big time right now. Or more often than not, he gets it.
and one of the most patient hitters in the game is that man at the plate right there. He'll take he's not afraid to see three four five six pitches in that bat. He'll take his walk the on base percentage high the batting average down low but he does have power under nine walks a couple of years ago in 2019. How much impact does the first hit in a while have on you because it's just a different guy right now. I think you're in the stretch. You do have a little more time on the pitch clock. But now you start throwing you got to be careful what we talked about these power pitchers you turn into a power thrower really quick. He's on the mound he's still trying to work quick he's not setting the tempo. Got to be careful. That's a big pitch right there. Sprandall you mentioned his patience that was out of the zone. Rundell has to think right field here. He has to. Pulled off that 3 1, went right into his game. Second time of the game, the White Sox with a runner in scoring position. Here it comes. They go on the ground. Pena yep. will on. have to go to first. And he threw it in the dirt, but his new first baseman, Jose Abreu, no problem. The way things are going tonight for him, you could do that. You could throw that pitch constantly. Been his best friend throughout his young career. It's 0 0, bottom four coming up. Back here at Minute Maid Park, speaking with the White Sox manager, Pedro Grifol, your first day managing the White Sox in the big leagues. What's a moment that you're going to take away from today? Well, it started off early this morning with all the text messages that I got, and then, you know, in there in our meetings, you know, and the way the guys reacted and, and, and what, they've, uh, what they've all said and how we've prepared. So it, it's all here. It's right on top of us. Uh, it's right on top of me. It's been an emotional day. Describe what you're seeing in Dylan C. so far tonight. Well, he's got he's got a three pitch mix right now. Uh, he's feeling good. He's, he's throwing the ball really well. He's mixing it up pretty good. Pedro, thanks. Back to you. First time Pedro Grifol has ever been interviewed during a game as a manager. And Cease ahead of Bregman 0 and 2. This one is playable. It's to right field. Should be an easy one for Romy Gonzalez. And it is. You heard him say rocket a three pitch mix. Well his manager his manager said it perfectly. Look at that gas up top. Another one paint on the corner. Little cutter slider whatever you like paint. The breaking ball the curveball and another great curveball. And another one just working fast kind of calling his own game I believe and his manager can say what he said three times fast. Forty eighth pitch rise high still ninety eight miles an hour for Dylan Cease. His last spring start was his best six innings no runs. 
there had been a couple of rough outings. In fact, after a particularly bad one, he he looked himself in the mirror and came back out in his next start and subsequent starts after that and realized I got to start to button it down. We got a season coming up. Yeah, well, that happened in spring training. Yeah. So I, I don't. I mean, this is he's mid-season form. He had a tough spring training. I know it doesn't really matter. I know starters work on stuff, and then they clean it up when they get out here when the when the bell rings. Uh, but I mean, these these guys are spot on right now. I mean, and look at his development. They're going to Roger yeah. over the years. That number ERA coming way down. Carl, what their pitching coach Ethan Katz told me yesterday was after that heavy workload last year, told Cease basically to back up his calendar by a few weeks. And so going to spring training, he was still building velocity. All right, 3 1 dangerous pitch. Alvarez swings at it and he threw that slider one more time. Same pitch that got him in the first. Building accomplished. <laughs> I mean, we're looking at 98 97. Paint up top, down and away. And right now, coming back, showing character here from a 3 0 count, working at the 3 2 with Jordan Alvarez. Oh, wow. 98 right by the big fella. That's how you move somebody's eye level right there. Look, I mean, he's going to have video. He's going to have video this year of the very first game to look at. If he ever gets in a rut, he can go to this game and and, and uh, learn a lot. OK, so Ethan Katz told me yesterday, he said, we worked from being rotational like he was in 2020, kept working on it to being linear. And then I asked him, I said, would Roger understand? He goes, absolutely. He was the most linear pitcher I had ever seen. Even though he spins off, his stride, his stride's going to be a little bit shorter on his breaking balls than that fastball you just saw, like that. He gets out a little bit further on that fastball to release it. You're probably, he's probably releasing it two or three inches. And when he gets out there on the fastball, he's probably two or three inches ahead of it. Yeah. Even though he's spinning off, he's still releasing that. He's spinning off towards first. But he's still a little bit longer in his stride. Right down Broadway, man. It's a it's a beautiful thing when you're doing it right. Well, he struck out three in the first, two in the second, two more in the third. Now looking for his second strikeout here in the fourth. Eleven swings and misses. How did you judge whether you were on? Was it swings and misses? Was it weak contact? How did you know you were having a good game? I just think about how I felt, and when I was releasing the ball, it was in the area. I, I tell big league uh, pitchers. Here we go. Yeah, right back to him. Finish that score. I tell most big league pitchers, you know, you you can get the ball within a ball and a half of where you're throwing it. That's what they pay you to do. So, and they're doing that. Both pitchers are doing that tonight. We head to the fifth, 0-0 zero, zero in Houston. We invite everybody to listen to every MLB game live or on demand, new and included for 2023. Watch all minor league baseball and live look-ins on MLB beginning. Emphasis, no blackouts. No blackouts, but new rules at the major league level. Minor leagues, of course, were the training ground, and now here in the majors, spring training, 
Game time down to two hours, 35 minutes on average. The runs were about the same. Pretty much everything else was the same, which was the goal of Rob Manford, Theo Epstein, Raul Abanez, everybody that was involved. And we are delighted to have one of the Let's go, baby. former Let's teammates, go. Raul Abanez, join us now in the booth as we begin Framber Valdez next inning with a strike. How do you feel things are going and how difficult was it to really get everybody on board? Well, there's a lot of excitement around it right now, and it wasn't that difficult. I think once the players started adjusting and adapting uh, to the pace of play, yep. uh, you know, it's, they really appreciate what's going on on the field. You know, there's what our fans have been telling us is that they wanted more of what they want is action yep. and better pace of play and less of what they don't want, which is dead time, and it's exactly what's going on. Thank now, you. that's how you tell a story under the pitch clock. <laughs> 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 and just looks at that one. So you look around baseball today. Atlanta beat Washington 7-2. Took a little over three hours. The Red Sox and Orioles, 19 runs were scored over three. Cubs beat the Brewers 4-zip in two hours, 20 minutes. Wow. There were other games that were two. The Yankee game, 233 as Andrews gets on top of that one and sends it into left. We're going to, I feel like, focus a lot on time of game. What do you what do you think what does baseball want people to really focus on? Yeah, that's a great question Ravi it, It's more about pace of play than it is about time of game and uh, more crispness more, a better cadence um, a lot more action athleticism and less dead time and it's really more about pace of play than it is time of game. What's the answer to the folks that say we pay a lot of money we used to get three hours and ten minutes and now we're going to get 230 like we're getting ripped off like what's the answer to that <laughs> well we're not hearing that at all fortunately we're actually hearing the opposite they really like this game they can bring their families uh, midweek yep. on a Wednesday night you yep. can come and watch the Houston Astros world champion Houston Astros play and, uh, and and get your kids home in time for bed beer stay colder hot dogs stay hotter <laughs> you just have more of them right Fards down there unless you were dunk hey, the beer. I saw you trying out that ice cream earlier I look pretty good <laughs> oh man you had to go there right <laughs> now my wife knows <laughs> wait, wait you guys had ice cream yeah we should add some more though <laughs> raw with the base running a lot more stolen bases in spring training this year than the year before or is that exactly what Major League Baseball wanted yeah, it's something that the fans have been telling us, Eddie, is uh, is one of the most exciting things that they love to see in the game is more stolen bases, more action on the base paths. And uh, we're seeing that. I think it has to do with the disengagements, and I also think it has a little bit to do with the bases being four and a half inches closer between uh, first and second base. Uh, and at the same time, it also has to do with predictability of, of the pitcher is going to deliver the pitch in 20 seconds. The nine hitter, Gonzalez, and going to third base aggressively is Andrews. And how about runners on the corners? Andrews a single, Romy Gonzalez a single, first and third, nobody out. I feel like Raul wanted to take that one too and break that one down because that's excellent base running by Elvis Andrews, a veteran at that. He's, he is watching, he's coaching himself at second. His eyes are on the center fielder, stalls a little bit there. And then because Myers was flat footed in center field, decides to go to third base, testing the arm. Catching him flat footed is the reason why he's at third base. Well, with huge no outs. opportunity now for Tim Anderson. A ground ball. Bregman charges. He comes home with it. And now in a rundown. And Bregman will tag the runner. Andrews. So the veteran base runner gets caught between home and third and is thrown out. And a big out. And now runners at first and second. But as a base runner. He had to go on contact. There's a runner at first base right here. If he doesn't go on contact, most likely Bregman will go to first on it. But he's a little frustrated with himself saying, geez, I, I could have read that and known that he wasn't going to second and the double play wasn't going to be made. That's where the frustration comes in. And Elvis Andrews ran himself into an out there. 5-2-5. Five, five. And here's the first pitch, swinging and sending it down the line and right. And I, I like it as a pitcher that he's, you know, again, paying attention to what's going on where I'm matching the other guy with zeros. He cut, that's, that makes me feel good on the mound when you guys cut down a run at home plate. And he's only one pitch away from getting out of this inning because of that double play ability and hitting the ball on the ground. And Andrews didn't stay in the rundown long enough to get the runners to advance to third and second base. Watch Alex right here. He understands exactly what Elvis, where Elvis is. So he decides to go home. You have to know your personnel. Personnel on the mound tells you right there, I can get the ball on the ground, get this out, and we can get out of this. And Rocket, we talked about the swing path 
Here we go. Of Robert. What did he just do? Rolled over again. Foul. I'm throwing that bowling ball down. Hard right here down. Exactly what you guys just yeah. talked about. Real quickly, now that you're in the booth with us, were there any instances today that kind of caught the attention of Major League Baseball? I guess Devers was called out on a pitch violation. Um, no, you know, what we've seen is, is we're seeing the same trend line that we saw in the minor league. Yep. Is uh, we're down to about 50% uh, less violation. So we went from two to one. Um, and those things are going to happen this early on in the season uh, from time to time. But guys are adapting very quickly. Misses up and in, seemed to catch a little bit of the case on. So here you go. You can see Devers supposed to be engaged, looking at the pitcher with eight seconds left. He's not, and that's why the home plate umpire in that case called a strike on Rafael Devers, which was the third strike. And a big one as they lost by one. Yep. One two to Robert. That one misses in. It feels weird because this is all brand new, but are, are there any other things that you guys in baseball are kind of talking about? It was interesting. Rob Manfred and I had this initial discussion the day he became commissioner. Nine years later, he executed the defensive shift being outlawed and a pitch clock. Yeah, no, I think we're comfortable with where we are right now. We'd love to, you know, kind of a wait and see approach. Yep. Build on not too much too soon, too fast, and uh, and and let the players adapt and continue with the feedback uh, from the players, from the on-field personnel, from the managers, coaches, and front offices. But especially the players. He's gotten a lot of ground ball fouls. He's looking for a double play as Valdez. Instead, the chase and a punch out of Luis Robert. Down, 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 and a nice high heater to move the eye level again right there. He's looking down, emergency swing up. How about the frustration in Robert's face right there? He's just trying to foul off. that thing off. Rocket, you did that a few times. Yeah, I love going up top. <laughs> yeah, I know they're pinching him east and west a little bit, but north and south. Go up there and then and then show off Mr. Splitty after that. <laughs> I knew that was coming up. Yes. Mr. Splitty, right? Yeah. Uh. I thought this it's been fun for me the last couple of days hanging out with these two, talking about the depth of the dirt, that everybody's got to be the same, because we'd have in the playoffs bullpen coaches would come out and their job was to measure the cutout where the grass cut out. Some people would cut it out third. I think it was supposed to be 15 feet. Some of them would cut it out 13 just for the base stealers. They'd have no clue. And, and then you have to put that on the eraser board with everything else so everybody knew what the cutout is when you're taking your lead. Bro, you're nodding your head like you know exactly what he's referring to. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I thought he was referring to the 95 uh, feet to the outside edge of the uh, of the grass, but it is uniform all the way across the league. Because teams would yes. use that to their Absolutely. advantage. Yeah. All the infielders, you have to have two on each side of second base, and all the infielders have to have both feet on the dirt. And Valdez, who was looking at a first and second no out situation, is a pitch away from getting out of it. 0 and 2 to Vaughn. That one hit Vaughn. He is going to go to first Man. base, and the bases are going to be loaded. And that's frustration right there by Valdez. You have him 0-2. Try to spike it a little bit more on the ground, not making a mistake. And now you get Eloy Jimenez up with the bases loaded, but the curveball just yeah, released it out early. I'll take that hit by pitch 0-2. Just hit. trying to make it super nasty. Yeah, you can see it. And Valdez, so we're gonna meeting on the mound now between the pitching coach second meeting on the mound that we've seen this inning bro you had 50 career stolen bases in your 19 year career major league career with the bases where they are now would that number go up I, I think it would be at least 51 <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but but I may be getting ahead of myself <laughs> maybe it stays at 50. The uniform cutout, right? <laughs> That's right. The uniform cutout. What, in your opinion, leads to more stolen bases, and 
and is it the closer the bases are or is it the disengagement rule? I think it's it's all of those things. It's the disengagement rule, it's the, um, the closer the bases are, and at the same time the predictability of a pitcher having to deliver a pitch within 20 seconds where in the past holding really wreaks havoc, as you guys know, on, on base stealing. Well, here we go. Base is loaded and the first pitch misses down 1-0. and The cleanup hitter, Eloy Jimenez. He was fourth in the Rookie of the Year race in 19. He hit 31 home runs. Second half of last year, he was as good a hitter as there was in all of baseball. Goal for two tonight. Rounded out to short and struck out. The next one. Hard shot right at the wow. second baseman. Boy, he hit it hard. 109 miles an hour off the bat, right into the glove of Dubon. This is where you give your third baseman some love right now in the dugout for a great play. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Houston Astros at home. The defending World Series champs have just one hit so far against Dylan Cease and Tucker. One pitch, one out, line shot to right field. And Romy Gonzalez, who had a hit last inning, is there to make the play. So you said going to break. You were all happy about what Bregman did as a pitcher on the mound, kept that zero on the board, and all Tucker or any other hitter has to do is hit one over the wall if you can hit a homer, and now you're ahead as a pitcher. Yeah, I'm giving Bregman big time love on that play. And his footwork. This is not an easy play. You don't. You probably don't get any of those in spring training. And uh, again, in a game like this, zero zero. I know it's opening, opening night. But what a what a play, come in and cut that run down for your pitcher. Oh, and one cease. And you watch Dylan cease closely. He will get that baseball and he will go to his glove. He's calling his own game. This was a conversation we had last year, Roger, with David Cohn. Like, is that the evolution of this thing? And it, it came quickly. To put the control in the pitcher's hand instead of the catcher's. But watch this also because Yasmani Grandal behind the plate also has he's the pitch calm and he's also calling. So it's like who is making the calls here? I think he confirms back. Is on the ground right at an easy one, I should say, in the air. It looked like it bounced, but it's a line drive to Vaughn for the out. Stream every art of market. MLB game live or on demand, new and included for 2023. You can stream all minor league baseball, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB TV, MLB.tv for details. Yeah, it looks like Cease calls it, and if 
Rondell wants to overrule him or agree with him. He can. This ball smoked to center field. Back goes Robert, and on the track, he's there to reel it in. And Jake Myers ends a six-pitch inning for Dylan Cease. Hard line drive off the bat of Tucker and a deep fly from Jake Myers, but still nothing across. Yeah, that's right, Dylan Cease. Pitch to the park. Welcome back to opening night baseball on ESPN. It's presented by Front Door, an all-new home repair and maintenance app. With Buster only down in the field, Eduardo Perez, Roger Clemens, the Rocket. I'm Carl Ravitch as we welcome you to our opening night game. David Cohn will rejoin us on Sunday night. All right, Rocket, how you feeling so far? You it's right? good, baby. Well, I'm enjoying it. Like I said, it's. Uh, I mean, I knew the guys could be on, but they're really sharp. The, the starters are and. Uh, you know they've been uh, again I think I think it has a lot to do with he's ceased calling his own game from the mound I know I they're agree. confirming it behind the plate so we'll see what's up reliever into the game after Framber had the bases loaded he's out and Brian Abreu the right hander 25 year old in that ball is smoked down the line in right and it is close to being a fair ball and it is just foul man was that hammered by Yoan Moncada. Yeah, and this is Moncada for the first time from the left side as Framber Valdez is done for the evening, but get an opportunity to swing from swing from a strong side. First pitch he sees. Just a little bit out in front of it. You can see it was close. I mean, there's a huge foul pole down there, and it was well over that, but he pulled it foul, and now we go with an off-speed slider to get ahead 0-2. One of the strengths of the Astros, and they have a lot of them, but certainly one of them is this bullpen that features guys like Abreu and Mayton and Presley and Neris and Montero, Ryan Stanek. Look, the evolution of bullpens and how important they have become. They're always important, but man, have they become more important with the change in this game with starters generally going five, six innings. They're trying to keep these guys fresh, I believe. You know, once they get to August, August, September. Raffi, in 2010, in the major leagues, there were two, there were 45 pitchers who threw more than 200 innings. Last year, eight. <laughs> Unbelievable. 54 and a third. The Astros bullpen in the postseason's ERA was 083. I'm kind of able to hold up on that as the appeal to third base denied. Be a real interesting decision. When does first year manager Pedro Grafal decide I got to take my starter out? There you go. Makata gone. Abreu's first strikeout, first man he faces. How about Fran Valdez's night? Keep an eye on the glove side down because that's where he dominated 
this evening. Good velocity, good movement, keeping the ball down in the zone worked. And if you get the right-handed hitters to focus in, it opens up the rest of the game. With that nasty movement, Cranber Valdez having an excellent night. I mean, seriously, he could have lived with one pitch uh, tonight. I mean, he featured a couple four seamers up high to move their eye level, but that pitch was uh, that w was very good at this time of year already, starting this season off. That attendee foul ball. So the one thing that you want to note there is Dylan C. 63 pitches. How efficient he has been. Valdez, five innings. He doesn't give up anything. He strikes out four. Neither has walked anybody. And Ben Attendee, a little blooper into left field and an easy one for Alvarez. Reminder, T-Mobile customers get free MLB TV. Redeemed by April 3rd at T-Mobile.com slash MLB. Dylan Cease just chilling right now. Pitching an incredible game off a season in which he finished second in the American League Cy Young race. Two down. Yasmani Grandal looks at a curveball in there, strike one. And interesting with Dusty Baker, he doesn't have any left-handed pitchers on in the bullpen. But he understands lanes and the strength of Abreu to be able to get lefties out. And that's going to go to the seats for Grandal. A couple of ground outs. And we saw in the office today, Dusty Baker, every year he's done this, he writes down little notes to make sure that he's ahead of the game when it comes to managing. And he knew that this was Abreu's lane the entire time. No too slow roller. Off his glove, he's still there at first. He won't get the flip because Abreu takes it himself, and Grandal is retired. Dusty Baker calls on Abreu, and he gets a 1-2-3 inning. Now he's checking his lineup. We're going to get some hits, going to get some runs when we come back. All new home repair and maintenance app. We are in Houston, Texas. Going to take a three and a half hour ride with Buster only tomorrow. That's what I got coming. And we will be heading to Texas, Dallas this time for the Phillies and the Rangers. Three games set in Arlington. And a call right here on ESPN. Michael and A-Rod will have the K-Rod cast on ESPN2. Also on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Baseball tonight, Sunday night, countdown 6 Eastern. On ESPN, how many times have you driven from Houston to Dallas? Uh, a lot, a lot. Oh yeah, it's not a bad drive. Four hours maybe. How about with Buster? Uh, <laughs> six hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I hope Buster, Buster remembers. I, I I I had the boys when they were little at Yankee Stadium trying to knock him down. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Cody hit me with a, a ball right up by my collarbone. I told him Roger about it. He said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> 
question. <laughs> I, I for sure brought you a bag of ice or something. I know. No I, yeah, chance. There's some compassion there. No chance. I think you'd lost your previous start. <laughs> <laughs> so I needed to pitch in more. All right. I see. I see. The kid knew. <laughs> oh, two. And that one's in the dirt. Maldonado, the eighth hitter for Houston, holds up. He struck out his first time up. So C starts the inning with 63 pitches and his strike percentage on first pitch strikes which again he got tonight is around 80 in this at bat 88 percent. Incredible. Almost an excuse me hit seeing, there for yeah, Maldonado. Just not seeing good swings still. Or even takes. <laughs> or even takes yeah. Half, half swings aren't even looking good. Maldonado last time was 0 2 and Cease painted a 98 mile per hour pitch on the outside corner. Oh, yep, he may have this one to center field real high, and because it's so high, it ends up short of the warning track and into the glove of Luis Robert. Kind of an effortless, what feels like, and that's always, I imagine if you ever watched a game and you knew how hard a pitcher was watching and somebody up here says, kind of an effortless effort, an effortless outing, that's not the case, right? You're like, are you, you know, kidding me, dude? Yeah, I mean, it's a good, uh, again, it's a good feeling. Look at these swings. I mean, when you have all three pitches going, you have three that you're uh, in very much control of. It's it's a great feeling. I tell people I think I won 250 games like that. I had to grind out another hundred, getting out of second, and third, and one out, where you really are exhausted. Those are the games that I almost appreciate more when I'm driving home because mentally I'm I'm exhausted because I had to get out of trouble so many times. Right. See, stamped up that fastball again, 95, and Dubon, the nine hole hitter, fouled it off. Again, guys, I don't know what we're looking at right now, but when I see him go to his glove, I think they're confirming it, and he's able to sit there and load it. I don't see him moving the ball in his glove that much. So he, he's got a pretty good idea of what he wants to throw, and I believe they're just confirming that on the other end. He's already gone to it. On the ground, right at Anderson. He fires to first, and there are two down. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. Now we move into that. Part of the order where the starting pitcher is seeing the lineup for the third time through, and it's Jeremy Pena. Right off the game with a single, and then he struck out. Now he's behind 0 1. Another first pitch strike from Cease. He continues to pound the zone, forcing the hitters to try to be aggressive early on. And he's going up and down, changing, as Roger said, the eye level all the time. Fastballs up, breaking balls down. There yes. he goes. And cease. Whatever it is, they seem to be very much on the same page. It does feel like Cease is calling his own game, and there's some cheese at 98. Or could you say the same button? One and two, ready to go. Pena did call time. Remember, the hitter gets one time out. You can tell the umpire, and you watch Bill Miller. He'll wag his finger in the air to signal there you go the pitch clock should start again. I've seen some highlights of this guy I mean it's it's pretty impressive again for start number one right out of the gate. Mm. Look at that pain you gone another strikeout Dylan cease. Nine of them in the game. The Astros offense, the World Series champions, dealing with a cease and desist order tonight. Awfully impressive for the White Sox starter.
congratulations, opening day. Thank you, appreciate it. You've mentioned you've taken the, or the road less traveled. I um, have. But for today, what's the first thing that comes through your mind when you wake up? That's a good question. Um, the first thing that I, get, that I thought about today is that we got a major league game and we're playing the world champions. And I feel like we're prepared for that. Um, and then obviously I turned over to Ali and I said, you know, we're here. This is our, this is our, this was our dream. This is, this is, this is uh, what we've worked for for a long time and sacrificed as a family for a long time. And let's enjoy the ride. Pedro, I met you in, a, in high school. Environmental science class. We kept poking at a fish. <laughs> With Mr. Gein. <laughs> it's come a long way, brother. Yep. This is the most I've done. I've called World Series games. I've called home run derbies. I've called them Sunday night baseball. This opening day for me is the most emotional one of, of all. And it is for me, too. Uh, it's my first one. Um, it's it's going to be the, f the first one I ever have. Um, and when you told me you were calling this game, it takes, it takes that emotion to another level. My whole family's here, my friends are here, but to have you call a game, is special to me. Love you, brother. Me too, bro. And we'll get a little deeper into the relationship that you have with Pedro Griffol, but he just pinch hit for Romy Gonzalez with Oscar Colas. One of the decisions that the White Sox made was letting Lurie, Lurie Garcia go, who still had 11 million left in his contract, and they're changing things, and the message from Griffo was, just, just watch us play. Like, please don't judge us on the past, just watch us play. Colos is one of those guys that has been very impressive out of, out of Cuba, another one of the Cuban-born players on this team, and a hard single. And Colos can absolutely rake, and he's going to be the, their everyday right fielder this year. It was because Fran Valdez was on the mound. They just wanted to bypass Valdez. And after that, he will play against righties and lefties. This is a ground ball. Pena off his glove, and it trickles into left field. Colos puts the brakes on first and second base. Guys, first time I saw Colas, I was really impressed. And I saw him in Miami taking batting practice. Mm. Great power up the middle and from line to line. Over 20 some odd home runs last year at the minor league level in his first year in professional baseball. And then this right here, getting through base hit, Tim Anderson's gonna put the ball in play. This is a play that Jeremy Pena would say he'd make, right? Nine out of 10 times, just was not able to get that glove down. The White Sox have Eight hits in the game. The Astros have one. There have been all sorts of guys on base. And it looks like Robert's going to take first base. I think they got Maldonado for catcher's interference to load the bases. As he clearly swung and fouled it back, but he may have hit the glove of Maldonado. Catcher's interference has him loaded now with just one out. Yeah, just barely nicked it right there. Maldi knew it. Reaches out. Pitch was supposed to be designed to be away. Instead came in. Wow. It, it really was very minimal, but they both heard it. You can tell by the reaction. Wow. So Colos will move to third base. To second base goes Anderson. Robert is at first. And here's that middle of the order again. Remember Jimenez, the bases loaded, had a hard ground at a second to end the inning in the fifth. Another huge opportunity for Vaughn. And that's ball one for Hector Neris, the third pitcher of the night for Dusty Baker. And Nettis will go to that splitter at any time, but he needs to get that first pitch strike in order to get the chase with it. Vaughn fouls that straight back. The Astros guys come into tonight on an MLB record 10 straight opening day victories. And they've also won their last 10 opening day games at home. Literally since they moved into the American League, they haven't lost a game on opening day. 
One ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. Misses away. Need to back it up with another one right here. I believe that was some type of split. You need to back it up with another split right here while he's trying to get the ball to the outfield. There it is. This is money pitch. What do you do now though? No, I throw it again. Absolutely throw it again. I'm not I'm not featuring anything up where he can get the ball to the outfield. Not in this this type of game right here. The only thing that's dangerous about that, if you leave it up, it's like a BP fastball yeah. from one of the coaches, and it goes a long way. 84 miles an hour on that splitter. And this is a guy that is certainly capable. 28 doubles, 15 homers for Vaughn last year. Base is loaded, 2-2, 0, 0 and he gets him to chase up at 93. Huge strikeout for Hector Neris. Again, the classic down, down, down. He has the split finger in his mind just a little bit, and he rushes him up top. And he's late. Another basis loaded opportunity for Eloy Jimenez. Mauricio Dubon shifts again towards second base. That's fouled out of play. Last year when the season ended, Eloy Jimenez weighed 277. So Rick Hahn, the general manager for the White Sox, challenged Jimenez on the last day and said, how about you come in at 245? Jimenez actually did not disappoint, came in at 244 in shape. Right down Broadway at 94. And that gets this crowd onto its feet. Well, this is a magic act. You've come out of this one now. The White Sox are 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. That actually was a very good split. Little Soto there on the take. Watch the split and the reaction of Eloy Jimenez with that right foot bringing it towards. There it is. Got him swinging in the magic act. A high, he pulled a, a strikeout out of his hat. High split right there. I mean, it's almost like a backup slider. That, that's a high split finger. Right Hector Neris and the rest of the pitchers, they've left 10 White Sox on base and still zeros on the board.
ESPN's telecast of opening night baseball presented by Front Door is brought to you by Walt Disney World Resort, the most magical place on earth. Pre-game ceremony here in Houston as they defend their World Series title. Dusty Baker telling Buster only how emotional it was to see the World Series trophies out there. The fans in the stands standing ovations. But tonight, Dylan Cease has been the story. That and the White Sox inability to drive the runs in when they had him on. And Cease is back on the mound. Nine strikeouts. He has thrown 78 pitches. The nine strikeouts second most by a White Sox pitcher in an opening day game. Blackjack McDowell in 91 struck out 10. Aaron Bummer is warming. And here's Bregman. Jumps on the first pitch and he fouled that off. Something we rarely see now, right? Starting pitchers going into the seventh inning early on the season. On opening day, never. Look at him go right to his glove and call it. He's got it punched in already. Now they confirm it and he goes. It's rhythm, three. baby. Cease is That's right. Rhythm. It's hard to come get him right now. I'm going to be surprised. I agree with you. The way that Alvarez has swung against Cease last time 3 0 count, you saw right now what he did with Bregman. Pedro Grafold's got a decision to make. Lefty on left, Alvarez is excellent. What are you saying? Are you saying they're ignoring they're ignoring the propeller heads right now? Wait a second. Here's Alvarez. Oh, oh and he hit him with the pitch. Slider. Dylan Cease has been an absolute control wizard tonight. Ten strikeouts matching Jack McDowell and White Sox history on opening day. And here comes the former White Sox, Jose Abreu. Right on the hill. Same thing Valdez did with his curveball earlier in the game. Excellent block by Grandal. One Big knock on Grandal was his blocking ability behind the plate. Great framer. He's always been an elite framer. But behind the plate, with Dylan Cease on the mound, he has been able to keep everything in front of him, giving Cease confidence to throw it in the dirt. The 1 0 to Abreu. Check swing and a foul. That hit by pitch ends a streak of 19 straight that Cease had set down. It's the leadoff single to Pena. All those strikeouts. Now the hit batter. He picked up his 10th strikeout. The former White Sox, Jose Abreu. Looks like Cease's pitch count may have just fallen off, which he put back on. Got in on the hands of the big fella, Abreu. That's two pitches at 97. Tight. And Abreu, who Cease saw a lot as a teammate last few years, knows that Abreu hits the ball on the ground a lot. A very good and big double play candidate. One, two. That one's in the hole. And here come the Astros with their first rally against Dylan Cease. Two on, one out for Kyle Tucker. That should be it for Cease. That's, that's what I was saying. It, it's all. You know, I found it difficult when I was having to face one of my ex teammates. There was always something there a little. Pedro Grafal signals to the bullpen, Dylan Cease. If this were Chicago, would get a massive standing ovation. But Cease joins Logan Webb and Garrett Cole with opening day 10 strikeout games. Here in 2023. That was impressive and I enjoyed that. That was something, you know, very special on opening night. Cease's night is over. The Astros with two on. Kyle Tucker coming in, the lefty. Bummer coming out of the pen.
22 first pitch strikes, one three ball count, and during the game he retired 19 straight, and now he has to sit and watch. As Aaron Bummer, the 29-year-old out of Nebraska, comes on. And the batting average against lefties, 191 in his career. First pitch is a sweeper. He'll throw a sinker and a sweeper with a little cutter. He's got Alvarez, who's not a fast runner out there at second, and Abreu at first. The next one catches a piece of the plate, strike one. Heck of a call by Bill Miller behind the plate. Elvis Andrews, the second baseman, not played a lot of second base, traditionally a shortstop. He and Anderson have worked when Anderson came back from the WBC a lot. First time in his career that he starts at second on opening day or any time during a regular season. Two balls and a strike to Tucker. Huge year last year. Swing wow. and a miss late at that. That's going to be difficult when you have that sweeper and then you can spot up with that fastball. Was in the yeah. net before he started yeah, swinging just at it. Fouled off. Good take that time by Kyle Tucker. Really good take. I'll tell you what, I would not be surprised if Tucker's still sitting soft here. It seems like the last two pitches, that's exactly what he was doing. Three two. Wow. What a good eye on both. Tuck and the umpire. Two great takes by Tucker there to load him up. And now it's Yiner Diaz with the bases loaded. The designated hitter made the team after a catching competition for the second catcher spot. A lot of ways, he's the Oscar Colas of the Houston Astros, the guy who is, Dusty said, is a flat out hitter. Aggressive on a pitch that was outside the zone. Disappeared on him. Cheating, trying to think in. <laughs> Swing before even he released the baseball. Bummer delivers. Mm, that's a tough yeah. pitch. Got a big part of the plate to get ahead. Grandal's calling these. He's calling these pitches and he's setting up late. You'll notice how. Again, he doesn't jump to the spot. He just eases into where he wants the baseball. Oscar Colas is in right field. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss held on to by Grandal. And a strikeout of Diaz. Thought that right there from Bummer. Only one pitch had to be in the zone. That was the second strike. First one and third one, both down and out of the zone. But he gets the big chase there. With two strikes. Here's Jake Myers. Bases loaded, two down. First pitch. Did it get him? Did it get him? Here comes Alvarez. It didn't hit him, and he scores the first run. With Dylan Cease on the mound, Grandal was brilliant behind the plate blocking here with the breaking pitch. You see it there. Turns around, but doesn't square up, and it hits right off the mitt. Because it hits off the mitt, ends up ricocheting towards his right. Good read by Alvarez, ended up scoring. one nothing Houston. Rondal had hit right between the legs of Myers, 
And now the runners move up to second and third. The next one from Bummer is in there for a strike. This early in the season, you would expect to see there's really only three wild pitches. Two of them on hit batters uh, from each team, and then that one right there. Swing and a miss. Myers. The Astros again without Jose Altuve. There's no Michael Brantley in the lineup. But a wild pitch with Cease out of the game allows Houston to jump on top in the bottom of the seventh. How deflating is that given what Cease did for the whole team? It's deflating. I mean, you, you feel bad about it. I'm just watching these sweepers. That last one, it had to, you know, you, you, you're talking about a catcher's thumb, getting in on a catcher's thumb. That ball definitely did. There's another one. That's not, that's not an easy pitch to catch, let alone frame it. Tell you what, I throw another here. I do not give in on a fastball. You got Maldonado on deck. This is a third hitter he faces here. Because Monty Grandal tonight has been great with the blocking with Dylan Cease. Three of them in the dirt, all of them hitting that chest protector, keeping in front. One lefty throw. Hits right off the net with a runner on third, and that's the difference so far in this game. Next three, two, he swings and misses. Bummer barks into his glove. The wild pitch cost the White Sox the first run of the game. Alvarez touches home. We head to the eighth, and it's Houston at home, up one nothing. ESPN's telecast of opening night baseball is presented by Front Door. That's an all-new home repair and maintenance app coming soon. And you can take it to another level. That one came so far in the front door. Grandal couldn't handle it. Alvarez scored on the wild pitch. It's 1-0 Astros. Moncada leads off. And the first one underneath the glove. Very reminiscent of a Bill Buckner play. Just hit a lot harder. Moncada to second. He's on his way to third. Here's the throw. Out uh, yep. oh, of third base. That can't happen. You're down one. 
cannot be thrown out at third with no outs. Moncada put his head down and committed to it without looking at Eddie Rodriguez at third base. This ball goes right through the wickets of Jose Abreu at first as it stayed down. Great relay here. Hitting it perfectly to Mauricio Dubon and a perfect throw to Alex Bregman. Juan Moncada. That's unacceptable there at third. The White Sox are going to take the opportunity to challenge the call at third base. Myers was lost down there for a second, at least from our perspective, in the corner. And then the relay but, throw was perfect. And Carl, even if the places, even if the play is reversed, uh -huh. that's still a bad play on Yon Moncada. You have to be sure 100 percent that you're going to go in standing up. Does the right thing. He slides to the outside part of the bag. But the call the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Chicago will lose their challenge. Another opportunity on the bases for Chicago. This one just too just over aggressive. Boy, is that play close too. That three and a half inches on those new <laughs> new bases almost made a difference. E3 and then 9 4 5 to retire Moncada in what turned out to be a huge out here in the eighth inning. And Rafael Montero throws to Andrew Benatendi. Montero was a workhorse last year, 71 games, an ERA of 2 3. Re relievers can get away with really flying open on their left side and spinning out a little bit because they're in the game for one inning 20 pitches. Movement on that 97 mile an hour fastball. You watch that front shoulder that's uh, basically your steering wheel. As long as you don't peel out too soon you can just pepper that outside corner. Bill Miller said Ben Attendee did go. Two balls, two strikes. Mm. New lease on life, Roger. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. 92. <laughs> A 92 cameo. <laughs> 92 combo right at you. Watch the relay here. Perfectly done by Tucker. Look at the footwork by Mauricio Dubon moving, putting himself in place to make that accurate throw to Alex Bregman. Dubon playing, of course, Altuve out. Known for his defense. Dusty thinks there's a lot more offense in him as well. He'll be working on that. But Mauricio Dubon, a couple of big plays tonight. That ball is smoked to right. It's deep, and it is out of here. Yasmani Grandal. And just like that, the guy that watched the wild pitch go by him ties the game up with a home run. That's how you get it back. Ball well, got out of here in a hurry, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Squared it up. 401 feet, 107 miles an hour off the bat. That's the most impressive part about this is the scouting report on Yasmani Grandal is he's very patient at the plate. So let's get ahead of him with strike one, fastball. Yasmani Grandal ambushed Rafael Montero on that one there. And now that out at third base looms even larger. As Montero gets ahead of Elvis Andrews. Yohan Moncada started the inning. An error on the first baseman went all the way to the corner. And he got thrown out at third for the first out of the inning. He conceivably could have been standing at second. Bregman, tough hop up his arm, but he's able to make the throw across the diamond. New ball game, new player. Yasmani Grandal says he's healthy this year. And it showed with that big swing and a blast. 1 1. Houston coming to the plate. Bottom eight on opening night.
Now's Monte Grandal's homer ties it. Baseball is back on a moment too soon. Follow at MLB on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for the most up-to-date news and highlights. You have to add different platforms every year. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. You're on all those, aren't you, Roger? All of them. <laughs> First pitch swinging to the Crawford boxes, and it goes high off the wall off the bat of Martin Maldonado. Kendall Graveman gets welcomed with a hard single from Maldonado here in the bottom of the eighth. Crawford box has almost paid big dividends as 85 mile per hour slider against Martin Maldonado stays up, hits it out front, and wisely so, he stays at first base. Andrew Benintendi doing a nice job of bringing it back. High breaking ball already elevated for you. All you got to do is put a good swing on it. First pitch, strike one, Mauricio Dubon. So let's just back that up with 98 down. <laughs> Hanging breaking ball 98 down. Raymond, deep play for Team USA and the WBC. There are his numbers 318 ERA, 65 innings. Another big strikeout guy, and Dubon on the ground foul. Eighth inning, Eddie. Yep. Tie game. Martin Maldonado is your catcher. You're, you're using one of the guys that would be a backup catcher as a DH. Any chance you pinch one for Maldonado? Uh, not right now. Not with no outs and runner at first. Maybe if he gets to second base with less than two outs. But you still need two hits to be able to drive him in from there. And with as young as his other catchers are, I would not be surprised if Dusty stays with Martin Maldonado on the bases early on. What was it like as a starting pitcher who pitched really well to leave a game and then have it sort of in the balance for somebody else? What was that like? Well, it wasn't a lot of fun. You're, you know, I, I, I actually iced back then, so I would try and go up and ice a little bit and try and watch it on the Close circuit TV. There Dubon. it is. That's a double play ball. Moncada to second. Andrews, nice turn and a double play. You could almost see him turning that thing over in his hand, where he's really pronating his hand and turn, you know, turning that sinker over. I thought he'd go to it earlier. I mean, he threw a couple sliders to him to get him off of it. Routine. Bradman wants a new ball. There's another thing. I wonder if you get down to two seconds and you decide you want a new ball, you throw it out and buys you another clock. You're still trying to figure out ways yeah, I to am. trick the system. I am. There's there's <laughs> got to be a couple other ways right there to get through this. So Graveman nod. After Grandal gave him that pitch through Pitchcom, and he throws it in there just a little bit low at 98 miles an hour. Big hits last year for Jeremy Pena. High stress opportunity chances in the postseason. 2 0. In there at the top of the zone, two balls and a strike. Hit 22 homers with 20 doubles, was the most valuable player of both the League Championship Series and the World Series. God, it just sounds heavy. I caught it across. Yeah, Kendall Graveman gets the job done. It's 1 1 as we are through eight innings here in Houston.
Well, what a weekend coming up. Basketball, baseball, the featured lineup continues tomorrow night. The women's Final Four starts at 7 Eastern ESPN and ESPN2. LSU, Virginia Tech, Iowa, and unbeaten South Carolina. Championship game Sunday afternoon, ABC, plus our first Sunday night baseball game of the season with the Phillies and the Rangers. Now Ryan Presley is in, and Oscar Kolos, the great hitter that has been advertised, came in and got a rocket single his first time up. Leads off the ninth inning. One one from Presley. Right field, Tucker. Gets the arm out to say he's got it, and he does, just as he got onto the warning track. So Polos became the first White Sox player with a pinch hit base hit in his debut since Joe Hall back in 94. Retired on a long fly. Presley's numbers, 298, 48 innings, and just part of that dynamic bullpen whose ERA in the Postseason was 083. Something's going on here. Keep it, keep keep an eye on his uh, after he delivers the pitch on his right arm where he's stretched it out two or three times already during warm-ups. That shake, the double shake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you never like to see that. It looks like he's trying to shake something out, like a, a muscle trying to tighten up on him or something. I've watched him a lot. I don't. I don't remember him doing that a lot. Anderson takes that ball outside. Keep an eye on it right here. These two were teammates. World Baseball Classic a couple weeks ago. Three and one. How about that take? Yep. That was a hundred percent take right there, and Presley continues to stretch it out a little bit. There it is again. I wonder if someone's digging at him a little bit. I don't know. You know, pitching in that classic too. You you dial it up. You know, you dial it up big time early through midway through spring training for sure. Robert swings and misses, and Anderson is a threat to steal at first base. Anderson takes a step back. This one is through and into left field. Now the White Sox here in the ninth have two runners on. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. I'm different, yeah, I'm different. So Ryan Presley on. Roger Clemens up here has noted that he has shaken that arm after nearly every pitch. Yeah, you normally don't see that. That's like he's still trying to get it loose or something's digging at him a little bit. White Sox with another opportunity here. 0 for 7 so far with runners in scoring position. Yeah, and tonight. 10 men left on base, Eddie, and it's been the middle of the order for Vaughn again. That's a good pitch that time from Presley. Coming off a season in which he had 33 saves. He's fourth all time on the Astros save list. And another good call by Bill Miller. 0 and 2 to Vaughn, who has struck out twice, been hit by a pitch, popped out to the shortstop. Yeah, 
He's a workhorse. That make you know, make no mistake about it. He he takes that ball and gets the job done. 48 and a third innings last year, over 528 of his career. Longtime pitcher with the Twins. And the one two. Boy, Maldonado is just a machine back there and swallowing that baseball up. That was a short hop. Great list there, and Liam Hendricks, who the report from the White Sox is encouraging, didn't put him on the 60 day IL. Vaughn over the head of Pena. That's going to bring in Anderson, and it's going all the way to the wall. Robert will touch third. He'll be waved in, and Andrew Vaughn delivers two with the shot single to the wall. The White Sox are on top, three to one. That was a shot, 108.7 miles per hour off the bat. By the time Jeremy Pena got up, that ball was by him. Trying to throw the fastball away, it stays middle. And Andrew Vaughn, just like he did in Cal back in the day, drives in two big runs for the White Sox. Their first runner with a runner in scoring position hit tonight for the White Sox. Andrew Vaughn's first hit of the night and of the season is a huge one for Chicago. Going one to Eloy Jimenez. And this one to right field. Tucker heading towards the line and in foul territory makes the catch and Vaughn stays put. Vaughn's got that Paul Konerko type <laughs> speed, and he knows it too. Not the fleetest there. He's already in scoring position, and with two outs, and you got Juan Moncada up at the plate, no reason to risk it at third base. Ryan Presley, the closer, comes in and gets touched here in the ninth inning of a tie game, now 3 1 in favor of Chicago. That's the best cutter slider he's thrown tonight so far. The Astros will have Bregman leading off the heart of their order in the bottom of the ninth. You mentioned it earlier too, Carl, without Liam Hendricks with the Chicago White Sox, it's bullpen by committee when it comes to closing games out. Peter Grifo has his hands full. Mm. Moncada nice. gone, but Andrew Vaughn, his first hit, changes the scoreboard. Alex Bregman will lead things off for Houston in the bottom of the ninth. And about face, two run single.
Well, he's the birthday boy, Alex Bregman. And the last two opening days at Oakland in 21, Anaheim in 22, Bregman a home run. He also has a history of just destroying the White Sox in 24 career regular season games, hitting 356 coming into this thing with five homers and 23 runs batted in. But tonight, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Blame all that on Dylan Cease. And now again with Liam Hendricks recovering from his fight with non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Rick Hahn, the team general manager, talked about an encouraging sign from Hendricks. They will try Ronaldo Lopez here the first time to close a game this year. And a first pitch, fastball at 100 to Bregman, yeah. strike one. That'll work. <laughs> He's just playing a little, little catch at 100. Wow. Yeah, another one that moved in on his hands. And quickly, Ronaldo Lopez, who's thrown two 100 mile an hour fastballs. Will he go with something different or bury it in again with another 100? Bregman did swing at it. It was a third 100 mile an hour pitch out over the plate, but a quiet out of Alex Bregman and an 0 for four night. It's 100 miles an hour. I would imagine that you'd have to do something special to be able to turn that around. I'm not really sure. I mean, it sounded like, uh, you know, off the bat, it sounded like they left his bat out in the rain or something. I mean, he's just, and it's just smooth. Jordan Alvarez. Four straight pitches, all registering 100 miles an hour. You're going to find out how his hand is on this at bat. <laughs> That's right. And during the practice, in between innings, he couldn't throw a slider for a strike. It was the fastball that he could throw for a strike, and he's been doing it so far. Well, you're done. Just there, exited there, there. stage right. There's, wow. there's hand. His hand's pretty good. Why? Why would you throw a, a 90 mile an hour breaking ball? Hand looks pretty good, though. It sure yeah. did on that one as Jordan Alvarez sent one a mile. 111.9. You see the distance far enough. Jordan Alvarez getting all of it and getting his team back to one run. Throws him a slider. He, he, he said it. it. If you're at 100 with movement, bad hand, did him a favor right in his wheelhouse. <laughs> that ball traveled 442 feet. We get a pitch clock already right here. That ball needed a visa as far as it was hit. Here's Jose Abreu now as a tying run against his former team. Wait on that. Another one. That's time a little more. 101. Well, if you can tell yourself just to get the head out a little bit, that's going to travel to right field very well also. Barry to slider. One ball, one strike. Again, the Astros have won 10 straight opening day games. They haven't lost since they've moved to the American League. And 10 of 10 at home. One one. I, I don't. I don't get this. All right, watch Go with this. Four seamer. You're, well, you're going to get it now, and he and everybody knows it. You've been consistent I'm, with it. We, unless they they know a book on him where he can't hit another breaking ball. Two and one to Abreu. Yeah, he's ready for it. Just was good location for him. If he's ready for it or not, give me the 100 That's, again. Yeah, 101. 100, please. 101 on, one on the outer half looks pretty good. Wow. Popped up. Is it playable for Vaughn? Near the seats and off the screen. He can't make the play. In and out of his glove. An extra life. For Jose Abreu. 
got what used to be the captain of the Chicago White Sox getting a second lease on life and Pedro Grifol looking for his first win as a manager in the big leagues. Oh man. Right back up here. Jose Abreu hit over 300 last year with 15 homers and 75 runs batted in. Here we go. You knew it was you know it was going to happen. He wants the slider. And if you hang it. It's going that way in the Crawford boxes. Seems like he's had a ball. nice he's had a nice at bat. I've seen some pitches but. So who wants the slider here is it Grindel or is it. That man on the mound there. The man on the mound. And I think he wants that gas. Grindel wants a fastball. Let's find out right now. No sign. Just bring it. Two balls, two strikes. The man that signed a three year, $58 million contract missing down. Almost looked like a changeup, didn't it? Another, another 92 mile an hour changeup. And they get you three you and, third they, best pick. and they get you three and two to throw a slider. Kyle Tucker on deck. One down, three, two pitch, three, two game. Yes. Not a lot of play. It's just not a comfortable swing with that cheese. It's not. But he's seen a lot of pitches. Again, no Liam Hendricks, the White Sox closer, to start the season. There you have another one off. Rocket, you would have thrown the splitter already, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing a 2 2 and 3 2. Well, caught a tough play, got it before it hit the ground again, and he throws out a Brayer for the second out. Beautifully played by Moncada. Ball hits dirt. First thing they teach you as an infielder, you charge, you come in hard. That's exactly what he did, and he beat the bounce, the second bounce. Kyle Tucker. First pitch in there, strike one, 91 mile an hour changeup. <laughs> Lopez looking for his first career save. That guy looking for his first career win as a manager. Pedro Grifol Sr. at home, the big kahuna, as we used to always call him and still do, on the edge of his seat. Two and one. Trying to see his son win his first major league game. Dusty hoping for. A Tucker bolt. Now Lopez falls behind. Dangerous hitter. Three balls and a strike. 30 homers, 107 RBI last year for Tucker. Way inside, and now the winning run will come to the plate in Yiner Diaz. Sports Center with Nicole Briscoe, Michael Eaves. They're hanging out and they're getting ready. A star player will join the show to talk the start of the Major League Baseball season and what happened here. And they'll give you all the best sights and sounds from a spectacular opening day of baseball. Plus, the two top seeds in the East, the Celtics and the Bucks, face off as they fight for playoff position. Milwaukee has been playing great. All that and a lot more Sports Center comes up next right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Roger, you like to manipulate lineups when you pitch. Do you think he worked around Tucker a little bit there? Yeah, that's a great, great call. I'm, I am not, 
too awfully sad about that right there. I'm, I'm with Tucker and then getting this match up here. I'm, I'm not I'm not too worried about that right there. Have to be careful with Diaz. He does have a lot of pop and he had an excellent spring training. Can handle velocity. I think the trick here is he has to be able to execute that slider at some point. Show him that he can throw for a strike, maybe. Well, we haven't seen much of it since it landed in the upper deck. Diaz had a grand slam and drove in six in that 24 to 1 win over the Cardinals in spring training. Here he is. And he pulls one foul down the line, and that will allow him to stay in the box 0 and 1. And that's all it takes is one pitch, one slider. He gets it ahead of him 0 1, creating a little doubt. Has yet to see that 100 mile per hour fastball. Slow to the plate on a high leg kick. Dusty Baker is going to allow Diaz to make something out of it. Outfield has to play really deep, no doubles. Cola is a little too shallow for me and right. Good job by Grandal, and again the benefits of having Griffol, who is so focused on catching, and the staff he has assembled. They have worked with Yasmani on doing just that. And tonight has been pretty special, with the one exception of the bummer pitch that was wild. But he does a great job to get out in front of that. It's the only play he had right there. One and one, Lopez. Jam shot right there on his fists at 99. He's ahead of Geiner Diaz, one and two. Robert playing deep. It's exactly where he has to be. Benintendi as well. Colas should be playing a couple steps further. This is a no double situation, tying run at first base. Runner goes on a 1 2 and he spoils it. Wow. Great pitch. Unbelievable. Wow, he spoiled it. That ball was two, three balls off the outside corner. Dusty sent Kyle Tucker. 25 stolen bases last year. Only four times was he caught. I like the call. What happened? Well, Hitter call time. Yeah. No more timeouts for Diaz. The one two. We'll see if Tucker goes. He does. And he fouls another one off. Uh, the White Sox in Griffal hoping to get off to a good start here. It was a borderline disaster 81 and 81 campaign last year with all the injuries. Cease was terrific. One two not going this time and out of play. Rocket just in case I know there's one out left. But if a ball's coming this way it's all yours not mine. <laughs> I don't do pop ups. We are, we are, we are ready. Swing and a miss the White Sox come into Houston and knock off the defending champions behind Dylan Cease. Well your roomies on the board. Yes he got to make you feel pretty good. Big time. Pedro Griffal picks up his first win as a manager at the major league level. And it ends the 10 straight opening day winning streak that the Astros had. Andrew Vaughn with the big hit. And how about What's Ronaldo Lopez. Really good slider. Yep. Went right back to the slider. Didn't give up on it. See that intensity there. Get used to it, Chicago. A lot more of that to come. Rocket, we've loved it, man. I hope Thanks, you enjoyed baby. it, buddy. You Thank were you great. Much. I enjoyed it, guys. Hope to see you guys again. Absolutely. Let's do this again sometime. We'll do that. More to come, come. for Eduardo Perez, Roger Clemens, Buster Only, and our entire production crew. We say thank you. We're off and running. We'll see you Sunday night, Rangers and Phillies. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks for watching. White Sox 3, Astros 2, and here's SportsCenter.